Well, good morning, good evening, good night, whatever time you're watching this video at. I'm Mike with Harvard Canucks and I wanted to jump on camera very quickly to talk about something that I picked up for my personal build. And you guys might remember this build. This is the console sized ITX PC that I built with Eber last year. And it is still running, still up there, still amazing. But the other day, Noctua announced this and I picked it up on Amazon. It is called the NAFD1. And what this promises is something that I've been looking for my personal PC. And that is to make sure that I get more fresh air to the processor as quickly as possible. And that is what Noctua is promising with this thing. And what is it? So basically what it is, it's a funnel that goes inside of an ITX PC to make sure that you're pulling in fresh air from the outside towards your CPU cooler. But look, I don't know if this is a bunch of FUD. I don't know if it's gonna work or not. I wanna take you along with my journey with this NAFD1 to see if it's actually going to lower the temperatures of the 3950X that's inside of this system. So let's do that right after a message from our sponsor. Excuse me, wanna deepen your cool? Deep enough to support EATX motherboards, massive CPU towers, and the 140 at the rear? But what about the cool? You have plenty of that with three ARGB fans for the proper cool, know what I mean? The new deep cool is comparatively priced and all you'll need in the compact mid tower. Check it out below. Okay, with that out of the way, let's talk about a couple of things that you probably want to know about the FD1. And the first of those is probably, yes, the price. So personally, I picked this thing up for about $17 Canadian, and I think in the US it's available for about $13 US. I don't know about other regions of the world, but right now with pricing going completely crazy, $13 US, $17 Canadian, I'm not really going to complain as long as it gives me the temperatures that I want it to. So what do you get for that money? And some of you, you're gonna complain because there's not much going on here. All you get basically are these seven foam adapters that create a funnel going towards a Noctua L9 series cooler. The other thing that you get are basically 14 little plastic straw-like things that are basically inserted into these foam adapters in order to make sure that they stand upright. Now, the last thing are, of course, four screws to attach it to a cooler. And I'm not gonna say that this is compatible with every single 92 millimeter cooler on the market because it's not. First of all, the fan on a cooler has to be 14 millimeters in height, so basically the same size or the same height as the L9 series of Noctua coolers. The other thing that you have to make sure is that if you want to install us on any other cooler, that there are no fan clips. That is why basically I was saying you have screws. If you have fan clips, typically you don't have screw holes on the cooler. So the other thing that I want to talk about is exactly how you go about adapting the FD1 to your case. So basically there are those seven different height foam adapters. And what you can do is use those varying heights to adapt this thing between five and 45 millimeters in height, depending on how much space you have between the cooler and the side of your case. And I'm saying the side of your case because there's a couple of things that you need to make sure of. First of all, do you have ventilation on the side of your case where the cooler is? If the answer is yes, then this is probably perfect for you. There also needs to be direct access between the cooler and that side of your case. So if you have a GPU or something else installed in one of these small form factor builds that gets in the way, again, this is not going to be for you. But anyways, with all that being said, I really wanted to install this into the system. We're gonna go through the installation process, see how it runs, is it gonna lower my temperatures? Let's get right to that. Okay guys, after reading the instructions, there's a couple of things. First of all, you're probably wondering, why do you have a wooden dowel in your hand and a pencil? Well, look, Noctua makes this installation extremely easy, especially for retrofit cases like this one. So this is what they recommend to do. What you do is you take a wooden dowel or a toothpick or something else, you stick it through the side of your case until it hits the edge of your fan. Then what you would do is you would just do a small marking, and my God, make sure that you don't mark your case. And what this gives you is the amount of space between the CPU cooler itself, or at least the fan on the CPU cooler, and the top of your case. Now, what you also have to do is you have to reduce from that the amount of space or the amount of thickness of the case. So in this case, it's a Dr. Zaber case, and it has about one millimeter thick steel. Then what you do is, you dimension it, so this is, let's just see here, it's about 15 millimeters, so in essence, 14 millimeters. Now, to achieve that 14 millimeters, you take these different foam adapters that I was talking about before, and you look at the notches on the side. So they have 
three notches for three millimeters, four notches for four millimeters, all the way up to 10 millimeters. So you would combine them in such a way to get the amount of distance that you need between your case and the cooler. Now the nice thing here is because they're foam, they compress. So if you're half millimeter off or a millimeter off, that's perfectly okay. So what I'm gonna do now with the dimension that I know, I'm gonna take off the panel and continue the installation. All right guys, so everything's been open and the first order of business is to take off the screws that mount the fan to the cooler. And you can see I've already done that here. The next step is to use those screws that I mentioned before and pop them in. And as I'm doing that, I just wanted to mention something very, very quickly about this build because you'll notice that the RTX 3090 that I originally had in here is not here anymore. Right now we're using that in an office project, but it is coming back into the system. Right now I'm using an RTX 2060 and it's extremely underpowered for what I'm using it for. So these act actually as studs for your little pieces of plastic, your, your straws as it is. So these straws are pressure fit onto each and every single one of these to act as a guide for your foam adapters. Now, let's talk a little bit about these foam adapters because I'm pretty sure this is being done live. I don't know if it's gonna screw up or not. These foam adapters can flex around these tubes and make sure that they are 100% snug. So you can actually see it takes a little bit of force to push them down. I chose the 10 millimeter and the four millimeter to bridge the gap between the cooler and the side panel of my case. Now, what do we do with these things? One of my concerns right now looking at this is if I clip these off right here where it is, it'll actually hit the side of my case instead of the foam. The last thing I want is one of these plastic things sort of rattling up against the side of my case. So I'm still gonna clip it, but I think the best scenario here is I'm actually going to press down a little bit to recess it and then clip it off. Oh, did I hit the counter just now? <laughs> okay, so there you go. So right now it's actually the foam that's going to be hitting the side of the case. So this is one of my recommendations here at least. Actually, I might have done this a little bit wrong because if I would have put the thicker foam on the top and the thinner foam down below, I would have had more flexibility to push it down. But anyways, I'm gonna get these all clipped and I'll continue talking about the, the process right after that. So with the system here running next to me, I want to give you a very quick update about my personal rig. So instead of it running the 3950X in eco mode, I've tuned that 3950X to run at an all core load of 100 watts continuously. Now, look, I don't run it at that all core load very, very often. That's simply because I'm gaming on it most of the time. I'm not doing full screen renders or anything else. I come to the office to do that. So what are the temperatures under that all core load anyways. Look, with the L9A operating at about 60%, 65% fan speed, I'm looking at between 86 and 87 degrees on the CPU itself. So did the FD1 actually make that much of a difference? So I'm gonna check this live here. It looks like temperatures on the CPU are almost five, six degrees lower at between 79 and 80 degrees. So what that means to me is that it's not chugging down on interior case heat anymore. It's getting that fresh air from outside. So I guess what that means to me is that Yes, it actually works. I mean, of course it works. I can't believe I made a video this long about basically seven pieces of foam, but it goes to show you that as long as you're getting that fresh air into your CPU, there are differences to be had, but is it actually worth the money? And that really depends on how much value you put in five, six, maybe even only three degrees temperature difference between where you were and where you're going to get with the FD1. But as it stands right now, I'm very, very happy with what Noctua has. On the flip side of that coin, all results can't be repeated in every single case. This is the Dr. Zaber Sentry with these components. You might have higher end components and get even lower temperatures depending on how much heat is being sucked back into your CPU cooler right now. On the other hand, you might have an amazing case for internal airflow, even if it's an ITX case. In that situation, I'm not sure if you're gonna be getting a huge amount of difference with the FD1. But if you are wanting those cooler temperatures and the situation warrants it, this could be a pretty good 
good option for a relatively affordable price and you don't have to supersize your CPU cooler for it. So I have to give Noctua huge props for actually coming out with this relatively niche product. I hope they come out with a bunch more of these for slightly larger coolers as well. And I guess that's pretty much it. I'm Mike with Hardware Canucks. I hope you enjoyed content like this. I mean, it's a very simple product, but it's cool to me. So I guess I'll see you in the next one. If you have any comments about something else you want me to look at, please leave them down below. Have a great day, guys.